In this video, I want to derive var of x for a geometric distribution. Now, what you'll need uh, as prerequisite to understand what's going on in this video is actually some second year A-level maths differentiation techniques. Okay, um, so that's probably not what you were expecting, uh, but uh, we'll go through it step by step so you can see where everything is coming from. Okay, so remember this is an extension video, so this is here for interest sake only. Uh, you're not going to get examined on this. Right, now, up here in the top right, I've just written a few things down. We know that x is a geometric distribution with probability p. Um, you've seen the notation q is equal to 1 minus p, so I'll be using that in this video as well. And we have just shown and derived, actually, e of x is equal to 1 over p. Okay, so we know the expected value of x. Now, what we want is var of x. Now, we know that that is going to be e of x squared, take away e of x, all squared. Now, the e of x I've got, fine. The problem is e of x squared. So, what I'm going to do is a little trick, essentially, um, that is a perfectly valid move. I'm going to write e of x squared as e of x squared, take away x plus x. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. I've just subtracted x and added x. Nothing wrong. Okay? Really, this is to make my life easier. Okay? And to make the algebra work neatly. Now, I know from the discrete probability distribution material that we looked at previously that I can separate this out. I could write this as e of x squared take away e of x plus e of x. I could expand that out. Now, I don't really want to do that because I don't want to have take away e of x plus e of x uh, because they would just cancel each other out anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the x squared take away x alone, but I am going to break apart the e of x part. So I've got e of that take away, sorry, plus e of x. And I've still got that on the outside. Now, this term, I can factor the x out and write that as e of x times x minus 1. The e of x, I already know, is 1 over p. And e of x all squared will be 1 over p squared. So this is where I'm currently at. Now, what I need to do is work out what that is. e of x times x minus 1. So we're going to need to look at the series notation for this. So this would be the sum from r is equal to 1 to infinity of... Now, each of the x values, I am multiplying by x to take away 1. So I would need to multiply each of my r values by r minus 1. And I would need to multiply each of those by their respective probabilities. Now, I know what p of x equaling r is. Okay, because I know what the geometric distribution looks like. So I can write that as the sum from r is equal to 1 to infinity of r times r minus 1 times by... Now, that is q, so 1 minus p, to the power of r minus 1 times by p. Okay? Right, now the p that I've got there is just a constant multiplier. So I can bring that out of the sigma notation, fine. That won't do anything. That'll be fine. So I can bring that out. R is 1 to infinity. Now I'm going to reorder these terms slightly. I'm just going to reorder it so it's r minus 1 times r q to the r minus 1. 
Okay? Now, why might I do that? Well, what I want you to do is focus your attention on the r times q to the r minus 1. Now, what does that look like? Well, it almost looks like the power's been brought down to the front and you take one away from the power. Okay? So, essentially, I can write that as P times by the derivative with respect to Q, because that's the bit that's being differentiated, the Q, of the summation from r equals 1 to infinity, the r minus 1 is still there, but now I've got q to the r. Now what's happened, right? Don't worry about that sigma notation, the r minus 1 multiplier for the moment. Just think of it like this. d by dq of q to the r, the power comes down to the front, you take one from the power. So that would become r q to the r minus 1, which is that term there. Essentially, I'm working my way backwards. Now, I want to do a similar thing, but this isn't quite what I want. r minus 1 times q to the r. In order for it to be the power came down to the front and I took one from the power, I would need to have r minus 1 times q to the r minus 2. Now, the only way I can get q to the r minus 2 is if I divide this by q squared. But I can't divide by q squared unless I multiply by q squared, squared as well. Because I, I can't just divide through by q squared. I can multiply through by q squared and divide through by q squared. That's fine. So that's what I'll do. So I've got p times d by dq of... I'm going to multiply through by q squared. Now, because q, and q squared rather, is just a constant multiplier, I can bring it outside of the sigma notation. Fine. Times sigma, r is equal to 1 to infinity of r minus 1 to the power, sorry, times q to the r minus 2 because I multiplied by q squared, and I've divided by q squared. Right. So, what have I got? I've got p times the derivative with respect to q of q squared times by now. The power came down the front, and I took one from the power. So it's the derivative of q of the sum from r equals 1 to infinity of q to the r minus 1. So if you differentiate that with respect to q, the r minus 1 comes down to the front and you take one from the power and you would get back to that stage there. Right. Now, what is this? The sum from r is 1 to infinity of q to the r minus 1. Well, let's go a little bit aside here. When r is 1, we would get q to the 0, which would be 1. When r is 2, we would have q. When r is 3, you would have q squared, etc. So this is an infinite series. We can sum to infinity because q is a number between 0 and 1. And so a, the first term is 1. r is q. So this must be 1 over 1 minus q. So actually we've got p times the derivative with respect to q of q squared times by the derivative with respect to q of this. Now I can write that as 1 minus q to the minus 1. Okay. Oh. Now this is where your second year 
different A-level maths differentiation is going to come in. So let's use the chain rule on that. So the derivative of the inside is minus 1. The power comes down to the front, so we've got minus 1 times minus 1, which is positive 1. So it's just going to be 1 take away q to the minus 2. So we've actually got p times d by dq of q squared over 1 minus q squared. Now I need to differentiate this. Now to differentiate that, really we should be using the uh, quotient rule. So p times. Now the quotient rule, we've got the bottom times the derivative of the top. So we're going to have 1 minus q uh, squared times by 2q. Take away the top times the derivative of the bottom, which would be minus 2, uh, 1 minus q, using the chain rule, over 1 minus q to the 4. Okay, I'm running out of space. Right, so I've got p times. Now, let's see. I can divide all the way through by 1 minus q. Assuming q is not going to be 1, okay? So q won't be 1. So, uh, I'm going to get 1 minus q. So I've divided through by 1 minus q. Um, I could do that now if I like. Let's bring that down to 3, bring that down to 1. So we've got 1 minus q times 2q. Uh, so let's just multiply this out. So I'm going to get 2q take away 2q squared. And then I've got minus q squared times minus 2, so plus 2q squared over 1 minus q cubed. Now the minus 2q squared and the plus 2q squared are going to cancel. So I've now got p times 2q over 1 minus q cubed. Right, let's go back up here now. Because what I've got is p times. Now q, remember, is 1 minus p. So we've got two lots of 1 minus p over 1 minus q cubed. So 1 minus q is going to be p, so that's p cubed. So this is what I've got. The p and one of the p's that is denominated there can cancel. So I've got two lots of 1 minus p over p squared. Now, let's, in order to combine everything, I'm going to get common denominators. So I'm going to multiply that one top and bottom by p. So p over p squared. And I've got minus 1 over p squared. So the numerator, I've got 2 take away 2p plus p take away 1 over p squared. 2 take away 1 is 1. Minus 2p plus p is minus p over p squared. And there is your variance of the geometric distribution.